The roots of a family tree sometimes are in a direct lineage to uh, track back in time, but uh, more often than not, it is a broad entanglement of roots that spread out in very unpredictable ways, and you can discover some fascinating things. Greetings, my friend. Welcome back to my game room. The game Twixt, specifically with two capital T's, uh, has a fairly short history on its own. But of course, the influences for the game go back a lot farther. So I found it an interesting piece of research uh, to investigate this game and where it came from, as well as its inventor. I'm fairly sure that you've played Dots and Boxes. Uh, there's other names for it. Most everybody's played it at some time or another, that little pencil and paper game for two players. It was first published in 1889 by a French mathematician named Edouard Lucas. He also invented the Tower of Hanoi puzzle in 1883. Dots and boxes could be played by anyone. It was easy to have a grid printed up. It scaled to grids large and small. It was very, very popular. And this established the idea of connecting points on a grid as part of a game. The Shannon switching game was created sometime before 1950 uh, by an American mathematician named Claude Shannon. He has become known as the father of information theory. In that game, a random arrangement of dots is drawn. And then one player is a maker and the other player is a breaker. The two points are chosen on opposite edges and the maker attempts to connect the two points by claiming lines turn by turn between the points on the grid. The breaker attempts to stop this by claiming the connections before the maker can use them. Mathematicians love to work out the probabilities on this one. And this establishes the idea of connecting points on opposite sides of the grid. Hex is a two-player strategy game in which the players are attempting to connect points on two sides of a board that is a rhombic shape of hexagons. It was invented by the Danish mathematician and poet Piet Hein in 1942. The identical game was independently invented by the mathematician John Nash in 1947 at Princeton University. It was marketed in Denmark called Contactix, and Parker Brothers marketed a version of it in 1952 called Hex. Again, the mathematicians had great fun with it, and this particular book was written in excruciating detail about how the game Hex works and its probabilities and uh, winning and losing strategies. I'll probably do a video about Hex one of these days. But what Hex does is establish the idea of connecting a continuous row from one edge of the board to the other. There's also a game that's simply called Y, and that is a triangular arrangement in which each of the players is attempting to connect all three edges of the board with continuous uh, rows of pieces. It was invented sometime in the early 1950s. Uh, apparently the inventor is somewhat disputed, but it established a different kind of a race to the edges to try to connect the edges of the board. And then in October of 1958, uh, the columnist uh, Martin Gardner introduced the world to uh, something called the Gale Game in uh, Scientific American magazine. This was invented by yet another mathematician, uh, David Gale, who uh, was affiliated with Brown University. It consisted of two grids of differently colored dots, which were slightly offset from each other, and each player was attempting to connect opposite edges of the board with a path connecting only dots of their own color. And of course, you could block a connection by putting your line in there first. Then in 1960, the Hasbro company came out with the game Bridget. Mr. Gardner wrote a book called Sphere Packing, Lewis Carroll, and Reversi. <laughs> and in this book, he describes Bridget, and he shares a uh, winning strategy for Bridget. So if you're really interested in getting competitive about that game, look up that book or that article. But that game was very popular in the 60s. It uh, actually was published in several different formats all the way into the 1970s. And so Bridget established the idea of connecting colored points with colored bridges from one edge to the other. So all these components are, are coming together now uh, to set the stage 
for the game Twixt. Now let's talk about a fellow that's named Alexander Randolph. He was born in Czechoslovakia in 1922 to a prosperous family, and he was educated in a private school in Switzerland. He worked in military intelligence in the early 1950s, and they got married, and lived in Boston, where he was a copywriter for an ad agency. Then he moved to Japan and became a shogi dan and fell in love with board games. By the early 60s, he gained a widespread reputation as a shogi champion and a game inventor. He returned to the East Coast of the USA, and there he befriended game designer Sid Saxon and uh, Cloud Susie. And in 1962, the 3M company was seeking to branch out into the board game business. And so they contacted uh, Randolph and Saxon uh, to bring them on board to help design the first edition of their 3M bookshelf games. And among those first games was Randolph's game Twixt. He had originally designed the game Twixt in 1957, but it had not been refined for publication until 1962. So among all those connection games that I talked about at the beginning of the video, you can see how they all came together to make Twixt happen. And uh, it's really the next generation of this type of interconnection game. So let's take a look at the rules to Twixt, and uh, then we'll come back here in a little while after the animation and talk a little bit more about Mr. Randolph and his fate. The board is a 24 by 24 grid of holes minus the corner holes. The rows around the edges of the board are called the border rows. The two red border rows are opposite to each other, and the black border rows are along the other two lines. Some sets use different colors. Each player has 40 pegs and 40 links in their chosen color, and the board begins empty. The object of the game is to connect your two border rows with a complete uninterrupted chain of pegs and links before your opponent can do the same between their border rows. Red traditionally goes first. Then the opponent has the choice to swap sides and still take the second turn in the game. If they choose not to swap colors, they still get the second turn. This is a gimmick to balance the first player advantage, which is a statistically proven thing. Most players won't notice it, but it's there. It was not published in the 3M version, but was later added to the official rules by Mr. Randolph. If this option is chosen, you can rotate the board to better visualize your objective. On each turn, a player has just three choices. First, remove any number of your own links from the board. This doesn't happen often, but it could be a valuable tactic in the right situation. Two, place one peg of your own color in any vacant hole except the opponent's border rows. And three, add as many links to the board as you want, properly placed between pegs and connected to any previously placed link. A player can perform any or all of these options in a single turn and in any order. Here's a series of moves to show you how a game could get started. Proper placement of a link is between pegs at the two corners of a six-hole rectangle. Of course, you can't place a link where another link is already occupying any of that space. It is possible that a game between evenly matched players might be a draw. Nobody wins. Apparently that's pretty rare. I've never seen it. There are rules for a four-player variant, a partnership game, and there are also handicaps for players with different levels of expertise in the game. There are also variations and adaptations of the game in different board shapes and different configurations. Like a lot of edge connection and transference games, there are plenty of patterns that can be helpful both offensively and defensively. Sort of like ladder building in Halma or Chinese checkers. And the game goes on like this until somebody wins, or until the players decide that nobody can win. And Twixt is truly a classic, as are so many of the 3M games. Alexander Randolph and his game Twixt 
are both in the Game Design Hall of Fame, inducted in 2011, and the game also appears in Games Magazine's Top 100 list. This is the game that really established Mr. Randolph's career. Twixt was published by a lot of different companies around the world, and it was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres in 1979. By that time, uh, the entire 3M line of bookshelf games had been sold to Avalon Hill. They picked up most of the titles, including Twixt. So as of 1976, the real only obvious difference was that the 3M was replaced by the AH for Avalon Hill. Uh, eventually, Avalon Hill began to uh, back away from the bookshelf format over the next few years, and uh, finally in 1998. That company was bought by Hasbro, as everybody else was. Twix officially went out of print around the turn of the century, but is still licensed to a German company that's making a version over there. And since 1997, the game has also been included in the International Mind Sports Olympiad. The present world champion is a guy named Florian Germain in France. The game does show up on the auction sites now and again, um, but it, People who have the game generally hang on to it because it is such a classic and uh, a very challenging game to play. Alexander Randolph moved to Venice, Italy in 1968, continued to design games from there, and he died there in uh, 2004. To say that he was proud of his design would be an extreme understatement. Uh, he saw it as really the climax of his entire career. And as a matter of fact, the epitaph engraved upon his headstone says, in Italian, of course, Here lies Alexander Randolph, the inventor of Twixt, a game designer's legacy, carved in stone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little excursion into the history of the game Twixt and uh, can find a copy of the game and somebody to play it with. It's really a tremendous game. Also, the inventor, Mr. Randolph, is... Uh, Pretty amazing story all by itself. I think it would make a ba great biography for any of you aspiring authors out there looking for a subject. But meanwhile, whether you play Bridget or Twixt, hey, you know what? Be sure to play every day. <laughs>